The other day, somebody asked me for some suggestions and strategies on how to make their food stamp money stretch throughout the whole month. They're having trouble feeding their family for the whole month with the food stamps. And I thought that was an excellent question. Now, we need to remember that food stamps are not meant to be the sole resource to feed your family for the month. It's supposed to be a supplemental program. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, this is the sole resource they have designated to feed the family. It's not quite enough because it's not meant by the government to be enough for a whole month's worth of food. But we need to know how to make it work for that. My first suggestion is you need to know how to ration yourself. You need to budget the money weekly. I know of people who get their food stamp money put on the debit card once a month and when that money goes on they go out to the grocery store and they buy a month's worth of food right then and there all of it in one shot. But then they find that as the month goes by and as we're getting towards the end of the month we're running kind of low on food. You know, that's when you have the, the old half-decayed head of iceberg lettuce in the fridge and something else that doesn't go with iceberg lettuce. So, if you have a set amount for the month, don't spend it all at once and think that you can buy a month's worth of food at one time and ration it out. You need to ration out the money you can't buy a month's worth of food at one time. I mean, I can't. Maybe you can. I can't. So, let's say you're getting $160 in food stamps a month. And I'm just making up a number because I really don't know. But it's going to make division by four simple. So, $160 divided by four weeks in the month, approximately, is going to give you $40 a week. So when you get your SNAP benefits, put on the debit card, do not go out and spend $160 at once. Go out and spend $40. Get one week's worth of food. That is it. $40. It's all you get to spend. Then the next week, you have another $40 to spend, and the next week another $40. And the last week of the month, you have another $40 to spend. You have as much to work with in the last week of the month as you did in the first week of the month. And then you're not going to be starving to death in the last week of the month and then go crazy when the next month comes and the next payment comes. You know what I'm saying? So budget yourself weekly. A quarter of the money. Don't put yourself in the position where you're getting all of your month's worth of food in one fell swoop and then you have to figure out how you're going to ration that throughout a month, but it's all there, and you're hungry, and you want to eat it every day, and you're hungry because you didn't have enough money last month. So in the beginning of the month, you really want to have some treats, and you want to eat well. That is a recipe for disaster. Divide your money by four. Go to the store weekly. That is my first suggestion. Second, I'm serious about this. You have to choose your food wisely. We're looking at it one week at a time, right? We've divided our monthly amount by four. You're looking at what you have to work with for one week. $40 is what I'm saying. $40 for a week. That's not a lot to feed one person. What if you're feeding two people? What if you're feeding three or four people? Ah! How do you do that? You have to figure out how to buy the most nutrition for your money. Not the most calories for your money. The most nutrition for your money. It is up to you to keep your body and the bodies of your family members strong and healthy with good nutrition. Living in poverty is very stressful. Having hard financial times or having a lot of debt is very 
stressful. Stress does not just impact your mood. When you are stressed, you release cortisol and it has an impact on your physical health. You need to keep your body as healthy and strong as you can with the best nutrition you can afford. So, what are you going to buy with your $40 a week? Well, if we lived in a perfect world and fruits and vegetables were all super cheap, you would be buying a beautiful bounty of fresh vegetables and fruits in a wild rainbow of colors and it would be enough to just gorge on day after day after day and you'd be so healthy because fruits and vegetables are so nutritious. That is what you want. However, they are expensive. So, if you went out and bought $40 worth of just fruits and vegetables, you might only have like two days worth of food. You really can't do that. You want to get as much of the fresh fruit and veggie realm in as you can. You want to maximize that as much as possible, but you need to look at what are my low cost foods that are still healthy and nutritious that are going to get us feeling full, but are going to nourish our bodies and our brains so we can function and live happily and be healthy. You do not spend your SNAP money. SNAP is the real word for food stamps. Do not spend it on junk food. Let me repeat that. Do not spend it on junk food at all. No, never, sorry, tough luck. You can't have it. There's no, well, I deserve a treat once in a while. Oh, my kids need a treat once in a while. It's it doesn't matter. Deserve, need, want, doesn't matter. Right now, if your money's that limited, you're not getting treats. You're getting the best nutrition you can for your money, and there is no junk food that is good nutrition. You are not, under any circumstances, buying soda, or pop, or Coke, or whatever you want to call it, from wherever you are in the world. You are not buying soda at all, no, never, not diet, definitely not full of sugar, you're not buying it. I don't care if you're addicted, I don't care if you love your Pepsi, you're not wasting your limited food stamp money on soda. Done deal, done. You are not buying potato chips, you are not buying Chips Ahoy, you are not buying cheese doodles, you are not buying whatever other junky crap that your tongue wants and you think you deserve. No, sorry, you can't. You are buying the best nutrition your money can buy. So, what are these magical, nutritious food items that are gonna keep you full and happy and alive and they're cheap, cheap, nutritious foods? What are they? Oatmeal. Don't tell me you don't. I said that loud, didn't I? Oatmeal. Don't tell me you don't like oatmeal. You're going to learn to like it. You're going to learn to like it. By the way, you can train your taste buds to like anything. Yes, you can. You can if, if a person can develop a taste for scotch, which has to be one of the most disgusting things I've ever put in my mouth, ever, 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 right up there with slow gin, because that's disgusting too. So if you can develop a taste for those alcoholic beverages, you can freaking develop a taste for oatmeal. And I did a video on the world's best oatmeal because yes, I make the world's best oatmeal. Ah, oatmeal, very inexpensive, very, very good for you. Soluble fiber and insoluble fiber and I forget what kind of fiber, but oatmeal is very, very good for you. Potatoes. Have you heard me mention before that potatoes will solve world hunger? Yeah, they will. Potatoes. You want to stay away from processed foods as much as you can. If it's in a box and it was made in a factory and it has a long list of mysterious ingredients, you really don't want to waste your money on that. If you're going to have processed foods, you want minimally processed foods like perhaps pasta. 
fruits and veggies that tend to be inexpensive, bananas, carrots, cabbage. You also must shop seasonally. Don't go to the store thinking, I'm in the mood for raspberries. I'm going to get some raspberries. You're not getting raspberries. You are shopping by what is on sale this week at your local grocery store. So let's say you've got your potatoes and you've got your bananas and carrots and, and your oatmeal and you're planning out some healthy meals, but you want to have a salad. Yay! Because leafy greens are the best. Yay salad. But this week, lettuce is expensive. Huh? But spinach is on sale. You're going to have a spinach salad. You have to look at where you have your bargains and your deals, right? So you shop by what's on sale. You are shopping for what gives your body the most nutrition for the smallest amount of money. You are not, under any circumstances, wasting money on junk food. No, no, no. Now, coupons. If you live in an area where it makes sense, it's worth your time and energy to do couponing, do couponing. Anything that will lower the cost of what you're buying. You can combine coupons with your food stamps. If you have a store that doubles coupons, even better. Now, don't use a coupon to get a deal on something that you don't actually want and isn't good for you and is still going to cost you money. You can use coupons to get things you might not necessarily want or like if it's free. If it's free with a coupon, go ahead and get it. Try it. Maybe you'll like this new item, maybe you won't, and you'll pass it on to a neighbor or the dog or whatever. You'll just never get it again. But don't waste money buying things you don't like if you're not getting it free. So here's where your processed and packaged foods might find their way into your cart if you are able to work a coupon combined with a sale type deal where you might get that item free. If you can get your Chips Ahoy cookies free, then you may have some Chips Ahoy cookies, but you are not spending money on the junk food. And really, that's not good for you. You shouldn't have that anyway. But I understand we all like our Chips Ahoy. Also, if you're finding that your food stamp money is not enough to get your family through the month, then you need to figure out how can I free up money elsewhere in my life, in my budget, in my household situation, so that I have some more cash to put towards the healthy, nutritious food we're going to be buying. Figure out how you can save on your electric bill. Turn lights off. Turn off those electric vampires. Turn the heat down in the winter. Turn the air conditioning down in the summer. Take shorter showers. There are lots of ways to save around the house. That's what we're all about here at Financial Freedom for Real People. And by real people, I mean you. I don't mean the kind of people who go to a Tony Robbins seminar on financial freedom. Those are not the real people I'm talking about. Love Tony Robbins, but those aren't real people. So, we're freeing up money elsewhere so we can devote a little bit more money to the food. If you are serious about your health and you're staying away from the processed foods, but you want to do some of that cool couponing, well then, use your coupons for your laundry detergent and your shampoo and your body wash and your razors and your deodorant and your feminine products and your band-aids and q-tips and antifungal cream and cough medicine and all the bathroomy stuff and the cleaning products if you're gonna buy that product anyway and you can save 50 cents or a dollar or two dollars on that product then save that money so those items aren't costing you as much and whatever money you had slated for those household expenses can now go over to buy you a nice big bag of apples or a watermelon when it's on sale. If you are able to shop around, then do so. Do not do all your shopping in one place unless you have to and you just don't have the option 
of lots of stores. But if you can choose between different stores, clearly you're going to want to buy what's a bargain here and what's a bargain there and then go to Aldi for your watermelon and you shop around. Now you know I'm a big dumpster diving freak. So if you want to give that a try, well that will really help you stretch out the food budget. But I understand if you don't want to do that, there's also scavenging for food in nature and this is a good time of year for that in the northern hemisphere dandelions i have been scavenging and picking i mean it's not like it's hard to find dandelions you don't have to scavenge very hard they're freaking everywhere dandelions are really really nutritious it is so weird that we look at this food food of the gods that's everywhere and free and incredibly nutritious and we look at it as a weed as something we want to kill 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 the dandelion something we don't want because we don't want the pretty little flowers in our in our lawn all parts of the dandelion are edible the root is good the stalks are good the leaves are good the little yellow flowers are edible the other day i was walking along and i picked a little yellow dandelion flower i'd never tried the yellow flower before and i said to frugal daddy do you dare me to try this and he of course he's like yes of course eat it and I did, and didn't really have much of a flavor. I have to say the little yellow flower does not have a strong flavor. Now in terms of the leaves, for several years I've been collecting dandelion leaves for salads, and I have to say, not my favorite green. It's not that tasty. It's kind of not. But now I just blend the dandelion leaves up in my smoothies. And as long as I've got a frozen banana in there, that's pretty much what I taste. So I have a lot of greens going into the smoothies. And I like me some free dandelion greens. Hell yes, I do. So if you can scavenge for some greens, then you don't have to worry. Is lettuce on sale? Is spinach on sale? Who cares? I can get my organic dandelion leaves over at the park or in my yard or everywhere. Now another way to save money over here so that you have more money for food shopping over here is quit smoking over here. I'm sorry smokers, I'm not trying to single you out. You know you need to quit. Come on, you know you do. And it's expensive. And you might say to yourself, well if I quit and I save that seven dollars on that pack of cigarettes not going to get rich. I mean, really, what difference is it going to make? Thank you for shaking the bed, cat. All right, so you might think the money you save on a pack of cigarettes, is that's not going to make you rich. That's not going to pay the rent. I beg to differ. It's $7. I don't know what cigarettes cost everywhere, but I know they're like $7 in New Jersey. That's a lot of money for something that's going to kill you. And which, by the way, is also worse for those around you than it is for you the smoker. Secondhand smoke is much, much, much more carcinogenic. There you go. Another reason to quit. Think to yourself, what could I do with that $7 if I wasn't spending it on cigarettes? $7 can buy a lot of healthy food for your children. Perhaps you could get a bag of oranges. Mmm. Some yummy tomatoes. Oranges and tomatoes are a lot better for you than cigarettes. Basically, I have the same thing to say about alcohol. If your money is that tight that you're having trouble feeding the family till the end of the month, don't you be wasting any money on alcohol. Sorry, no, you can't. The nutritional needs of your children come first and foremost always. Always, always. I don't want to hear about I don't have enough money to feed my kids. I bet you have cigarettes in your purse and alcohol in the fridge. No, 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 no. I hope it doesn't come across as judgy. I just think it's kind of common sense. The kids come first. No soda for you, no beer for you, no potato chips, no cigarettes. But what are you going to buy with all that money that you would have spent on all those things? some freaking fruit for your kids. You don't have kids, you say? You have nobody? You're single? It's just you? Then buy some fruit for yourself. Is your 
body not the temple of your soul? Do you not deserve some healthy food too? How much would your body love you if you held off on the alcohol and the cigarettes and instead you had a kale salad and some apples and some grapes and broccoli? How about some broccoli? Your body would love you for that. Most nutrition for the money. Not the most calories for the money. We must get away from thinking that junk food is a bargain. It is not a bargain. You're buying nothing. You're buying nothing. Nothing. A lot of fat, a lot of calories, but nothing of substance. Also, if you can grow any of your own food, then I would encourage you to do that. Even if you don't have a yard, so you can't have a big old vegetable garden, if you have a porch or a patio or a balcony or a step, just a step coming into your back door, you can put a pot with dirt in it and have a tomato plant coming out of that. You could grow some herbs on your windowsill. Even if you can't afford pots, you can put some dirt in a Dixie cup and, and grow a little cilantro and a little basil and a little parsley just so you don't have to spend any of your food stamp money on the different like herbs and things that are gonna make your rice and beans tastier. Rice and beans, I forgot to say that before. Obviously, rice and beans, fabulous, low cost, lots of nutrition. My personal favorite is rice and black beans. I love that. Those are my tips for stretching out that finite amount of money you get from the federal government each month as your SNAP benefits. We know they're not going to increase those benefits, so stretch them, you must. I hope this was helpful. I hope it didn't sound mean when I told you you can't have soda, but you can't. Cheese is not really very good for you, and it's not cheap. Cheese used to be a cheap food. It is not cheap now. All right, thanks for watching. See you all later. Bye-bye. His name is Kurt. He's named after Kurt Cobain. Isn't that adorable?